Welcome to the video. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover all things Azure. Today, the Data Factory saga continues and we are checking out Get Metadata Activity that allows you to build some extra logic to your pipelines. And this activity is a great addition to your Data Factory toolbox. So without further ado, let's dive into today's topic. Let's imagine a situation that we have a storage account. In that storage account, we have a CSV file. Then we have a data factory pipeline. In that pipeline, we have a copy activity that would copy the contents of this CSV file. However, we have wrapped this copy activity to an if condition, and we would only like to run this copy activity if the CSV file has been modified during the past 24 hours. How we would do this? Of course, we can use the get metadata activity in the data factory and fetch the last modified timestamp of the CSV file and then have the logic in our if condition to only run the copy activity if the CSV file has been modified in the last 24 hours. Now let's digest this activity in a bit more detail and here we can see how the get metadata activity looks in the data factory UI. This is an activity that retrieves some metadata information about some dataset. There are 10 different types of metadata that are currently supported in the data factory, depending on the source or the linked service for that dataset. The maximum size of output for this activity is 4 megabytes. The output of this activity can be used in the following activity as dynamic content, and this activity is a bit similar to the lookup activity that we covered in the previous video. Now let's take a look at what are the different metadata options that we have available for this activity, meaning what kind of metadata we can retrieve with this activity. First, we have the item name that will retrieve the item name, and then we have the item type that will return is the item file or folder. Then we have the size that will return the size of the item. Then we have created that will return the created timestamp of the file or folder. And then we have the last modified and this will also return a timestamp telling the timestamp when the file or folder was last modified. Then we have the child items that will return all the files and folders inside a folder. Then we have content MD5 that will return the MD5 hash of the file. Then we have the structure that can be used to fetch the structure of a file or a table in a relational database. Then we have a column count that will return the column count of a file or a table. And then lastly we have the exist that will check whether this file or table exists. And exists will return a boolean value meaning true or false. Now let's take a look at a couple of these options and what kind of outputs they would yield in the data factory. Let's have a storage account. In that storage account let's have a CSV file and call that azure.csv. And then we are going to have a get metadata activity in our data factory pipeline. And let's first have the option of the get metadata activity set to last modified. And now when our get metadata activity runs, we can see that the get metadata activity will output the last modified timestamp of that file. Now let's change our get metadata activity option to exist and let's run our get metadata activity again. Now we can see that our return value is a boolean value and it is now true since our file is there and exists. If our file wouldn't exist, the get metadata wouldn't throw an error, but it would return false. Lastly, let's set our option to structure and let's see what kind of output our get metadata activity now yields when it runs. Now we can see after it run, we get this structure array in the output and it has all the columns and their data types that we have in the CSV file. We can see that we have their column name and the type of that is string and then we have column type and the type of the column is string and then we have the column location and the type of that is string as well since we have the CSV file and everything is string there. And like with the lookup activity, the outputs of the get metadata activity would be now available to be used in the following activities as input and dynamic content. So this would allow us to build some extra logic to our pipeline based on the get metadata activities outputs. Now we have core understanding how get metadata activity works. So next, let's open up the data factory and let's do a quick demo to demonstrate how this activity works in action. Now we are in the data factory. I will first show you that I've already created a container to our storage account that we can use in this demo. In this container tutorial 10 source, I have one file called azure.csv. And in this file, I have four 
columns and five rows including the header that describe the Azure resources in this resource group that I'm currently using. Let's go back to the data factory and let's start by creating a new folder for our pipeline. Let's call this folder tutorial 10 and now let's create a pipeline to that folder and let's name our pipeline according to our naming conventions. Then let's add get metadata activity to this pipeline. Let's just name our get metadata activity as get metadata. And now let's create a new data set that will point to that same file that I showed you earlier. Let's create a new folder for our data set called tutorial 10. And now let's create a new data set to that folder. Let's select Azure Blob Storage and let's select delimited text since we have a CSV file. Let's first name our data set according to our naming conventions. And then let's pick the linked service for our data set. And now let's navigate and find our file in the storage account. And now we are done with the data set configuration and we can click OK. We can quickly preview the data that we can see that our configuration is correct and the data looks good. So everything is fine. Now we can go back to our pipeline and configure our get metadata activity to use this data set as a source. And now from the field list option, we can select the metadata that we would like to retrieve. Let's first select the last modified. So we would like to retrieve the last modified timestamp of the file. Let's debug our pipeline. And now our pipeline has completed and we can see that the output of our get metadata has this property called last modified and it has the last modified timestamp for our file. Next, we could add a little bit more logic to this pipeline. Let's create a variable and call that var1. And let's add set variable activity after the get metadata activity and call that set var1. And then let's set the value for our var1 using the dynamic content. And as you can see, since our, we are running the set variable activity after the get metadata activity in the pipeline flow, the dynamic content has this activity output tab and it already offers all the metadata items that can be retrieved with the get metadata activity. Since we are now fetching the last modified, we would like to set this value for this var1 to be last modified timestamp that will come out from the get metadata activity. Now we can debug our run again and see what happens. And after our run completed, we can check that we have now set the value for var1 to be the last modified timestamp of that file. And this is how you could use the outputs from the get metadata activities in the following activities. That is all for today's video. I hope you now have an understanding how to use get metadata activity as part of your data pipelines in Azure Data Factory. Before ending this video, I would like you to know that making these videos takes a huge chunk of my free time. So I would highly appreciate if you would leave a like to this video and subscribe to the channel for more Azure and Data Factory content. Also, if you have any suggestions what you would like to see me cover in the upcoming videos, I'd like to hear them in the comment section down below. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.